Music History, Spring 2022 Final Project by Kevin Ortega. My project is on Claire de Lume, a modernist composer Claude Debussy. He was born in France in 1862, one of the leading French musical impressionists from Claire in 1890, and after 15 years of revisions, it was finally published in 1905. It is one of Debussy's most famous works. It has been used in many pop culture film and television shows, but more recently, Claire de Lume has been featured in Twilight. It has become Bell's theme motif. Here is a quick listen. It is in French and it means the light of the moon. It is part of a larger culture called Suite Burgomasque. The suite is made of four movements, but the moon is the third movement. Burgomasque refers to the type of medieval 16th century dance. The suite gets its name from a poem of the same name. The name of the poem is referred to the second line of the poem, where in 1869, this by some French poet, Paul Verlaine. Was, this was a very popular thing for composers to do, that is to select a poem and write music for it to evoke a feeling. It is important to boost his genre as a songwriter. His style, he was opposed to the romantic style that Tchaikovsky Sh- and, and also opposed to a classical style like Beethoven. He does not conform to the rules of classic theory and composition. Instead, he uses unconventional harmonies and scales for a different kind of music that people haven't heard before. So what he what he uses that all this can be found in Debussy's music. Claire de Lune is like an impression painting, and really about capturing the essence of something, not the fine details, but the spirit. What it does is, is the painting it paints a picture, it creates a mood, it takes it somewhere beautiful. Into, into into this song form. Three different sections, which is tertiary form. A, we have A section, B section, A section. This is all the music she's divided into sections. The A section is Andante, or Walking Temple, which includes the main theme. Last is distinctive work that contains a lot of open and empty space with a long time note, yet it is very, very captivating. And that is one of my favorite parts that we will hear in a bit. B section is a bit fast and introduces the second theme. The third section is the A section, which is like the first A section, but it is a bit different. It's, it is slower. It brings back the melodic material for the first section. And there is a short outro at the end that helps close out the piece. As well as here is my favorite part on the second page. It is a recognizable part, and all the notes come together here, but at the same time, but so quietly. It is super powerful. That's Debussy Bro. It is a short piece that is really pretty simple in its construction. A section is again on Dante walking up to the main theme. The opening begins with harmony that we hear the main melody. This will be described by pianist Wayne Hilbert, who I listened in the work site at the end of the program. Second page, music starts growing in agitation. The piece, you hear a beautiful melody that comes out of that scale. Kind of winds around. And what we don't realize is it's going downhill. Down, lower, lower. Down, lower, lower. Second page, music starts growing agitation. We will use to use a characteristic role breaking it when it comes to chords. They do not choose clusters of notes to adhere to any standard. So they help me choose them for a specific mood they create or the ambience. Dissonant chords like role breaking. So let's take a listen to the dissonant chord parts on this page. It's a peek into the beautiful world high note part that remains, uh, reminds me of a harp. This is 
what leads us to the second section. These are where the things start rolling along and get interested in the piece. It becomes a lot more technical to many than the first. These are pages we see this and notes of broken chords. He uses them to create a shimmering aura. How does he do this? He uses our pages on the left hand and combines this with the right hand, which creates a beautiful aura of sound underneath the melody. Peace. Also contains the waterfall effect. There will be a trip between the first and second section where the temple picks up a little bit, up a little bit and we hear the second theme. There are a few things to listen for. The section involves running our pitches and lots of motion. This is the climatic movement of the piece. The movement will, will, when all the notes start turn, turn, tumbling down like a waterfall, a pivotal movement, and it is very, very beautiful. First, let's hear the pianist Wayne Holbrook describe it. Third part green notes are similar to notes, notes opening, initial opening, and the decorative opening. So you can see that it brings back the opening theme, a lot of material from the first section, but in a slightly different way. It puts a little decoration on it. So in this section of what we just heard, which is the end of the piece, we have a reputation, we hear a picture playing into those we heard at the beginning. At, and, and finally, at the very end of the piece, we turn to these arpeggios. It is not really a melody, it is just the finish on a piece with arpeggios. <laughs> The end to summarize is the outro that brings, brings, to the piece, brings the piece to a close and ends faster and the perfect cadence. This is a very conventional chord progression at the end to close out the piece. Moving from fifth to the first of the scale, something that he doesn't usually do, but it helps close out the piece very well, giving a very sense feeling for a listen of the piece coming out to an end. So let's take a listen to the final move of perfect, perfect cadence. And that's all I have to say about Claude Debussy. The so status like by Google artists that we did have not studied. The library resonates, resonates to Claude the Luna, but just now I think it's pretty thoroughly built. So I hope you will hear this song and and and, and really any song in movies, films, and our TV and be able to recognize it is originated from Debussy's title Loon. Song of Luna is by the Narya Group. This is the Narya Group. They sing a mix of panel voices, it's essential for magic of Claude Debussy's title Loon. This is written by by Kaya, Kaya Chubar, and arranged by Ham Mazar.
The Naughty Group is a classical crossover group. They have crossed over from classical to pop. There are four opera voices that are joined to create music. The Naughty contains four brilliant voices whose, whose voice skill and rigid choreograph compositions feature. Pop, opera, pop, and a world music with classical high notes. While exhibiting their intimate personal style, their name Naughty, where does it come from? It refers to Naughty's song in an opera, and it stands for the North Naughty is probably Canadian. And, and I am ending here with the song The Moon is derived from the Clare the Moon. I hope after our analysis song, you'll be able to recognize it as quickly as, as I was able to. The last slide will be the one more excited page. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoy it.